here over at subscribe star so apparently to be english in england now is offending offensive to the soy voice so this is a movie um 1964 made about a battle in central africa and cat ladies have their panties up in their crack about a simple movie and if you want to read more to, about that area henry Ryder haggard's books are uh, excellent kind of well balanced especially when you consider the time they're written so for some reason, the globalist media is only trying to make one group of people feel bad about their history and no other group on Earth. But why exactly would they feel bad? Humans around the world do the exact same sort of things, just on different scales. No matter what the modern Hollywood will tell you, if you've seen with the, the woman king, <laughs> what a reimagining of history that is. It's like, so this is just a fictional reimagining where the bad guy, you turn you you turn the Dahomey tribe from the, uh, the traitors in, in a human product into the good guys for some so you just lied like yeah yeah we basically we lied we wanted to feel better about ourselves like okay well i mean wouldn't couldn't couldn't the french and english also do that because i think they were the ones who were trying to stop that trade anyway the thing is you can't judge the past it's impossible and it's pointless it means that there will be a never-ending line of the future people whining about the past and if someone is pushing that on you, well, they're trying to manipulate you and probably trying to distract you away from the horrible things that they're doing right now. That, that, that Sam Bankman Freed uh, crypto scandal kind of dropped out of the uh, dropped out of the news really quickly. Or, uh, you know, like, hey, where's that money going in Ukraine? So it's going in somebody's pockets because soy people need things to virtue signal about and pretend to be outraged about. It's it's uh, basically the psychology of any activist group. Like Scott Dilbert pointed out with the ADL, things can't actually get better. They have no reason to exist. A lot of it has to do with funding. It's like, you're, like your funds will dry up unless, you, unless you're continually using them and creating a draw on the, the resources. You know, the best patient is going to be a permanently reoccurring one who requires a lifetime of expensive bills so the grift can go on forever. SJWs don't actually want solutions. They want to accelerate the destruction of the West because they think they're going to usher in communism from the wreckage like China or Russia, which, you know, was so successful that it had brutal human rights abuses, gulags, and unfortunately mass starvation. You ask the left wing, so you're going to go after the 1%? And suddenly they get nervous because they're funded and controlled by that 1%. So they're going to actually destroy the middle class. So the 1% can get even more powerful. They're, it's the, the Oregon and Washington uh, Antifa and BLM who march through residential neighborhoods. You know, like upper middle class, middle class neighborhoods. You look at them and you're like, so why don't you go outside your city council member's house or the mayor's house or the governor's house? Why are you just going through some random upper middle class neighborhood? That doesn't make any sense. It's just a pointless exercise. Come out in the streets with us. And march around a neighborhood? What happened to speaking truth to power? It's like, this is, <laughs> go to the city council house, the people who have the, or are your representatives. No, no, because we don't actually want to hold them accountable because we voted for them. So we're going to do something that's even more pointless. You just, like, don't you people have to do something in the morning? Because because the people in the residential areas do. Anyway, so this uh, Zulu mo movie offends them. Uh, keep in mind, it's from 1964. Uh, which, a fun movie, right? Because the uh, English and Zulus had some battles in the movies and in real lives. And that is problematic for the cat ladies. You know, it'd be funny if they came out with... Uh, the uh, what was it, the homie tribe movie I just I just talked about it if it came out with that movie and it was a, like an honest uh, portrayal of um, the woman king that the homie tribe who were fighting to maintain their way of life oh great it's an indigenous culture unfortunately their way of life involves uh, uh, trading human beings and sometimes sacrificing them oh. Well, if you have to respect all cultural differences, I guess, yeah. So the uh, the Zulus in English are fine with, with going to war. That's what soldiers are for. Dying in battle is how a Zulu warrior wants to go. An English soldier wants to die in a whorehouse, but this is going to have to be close enough. Basically, we're here because we started listening to women. I don't know if I can say that on YouTube. It seems like, you know, like 100 years ago, all that kind of stuff happened. It seems like cat ladies and soy boys kind of team up to destroy society. 
no offense, but you have people who have like a little too much time on their hands or they're a little bit mentally unstable and they all seem to find each other on social media and they team up to form some globalist group that usually has the outcome of destroying society, but then they pat themselves on the back and when they turn their area into a high crime asshole, they just flee the area to go destroy a new area and repeat the cycle all over again. Before social media, these people would have been ignored, but now they always need to do something. But they do things like tear down artworks and statues, or they whine about movies, but they never actually do anything about crime or the increasing amount of homeless. They just change the nomenclature of the terms, and then they get funding for themselves to prove whatever it is they wish to set out to prove that, no, 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 no. jail time actually doesn't work for criminals. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> no, no, no. Here are the studies that say you read the stage. Like the studies say the opposite of what your conclusion is. Okay, you have me there. Um, so instead, they just rename things, and and now it's the marginalized and oppressed, unhoused, who are people of drugs and violent crime. Like renaming things is just another pointless rearrangement of deck chairs on the Titanic. But I'm glad you feel better about yourself, and then you can correct us when we use the wrong nomenclature. But, you know, you're not actually doing anything about the homeless tent cities that are spread throughout America now. In fact, they just increase every year. And, and you're you're worried about this some Zulu movie on a, you know, uh, this is this is where you need to put your resources. Um, but the whole time in their cities, the crime gets worse. They can't actually fix anything because that requires making logical decisions, not emotional ones. So left wing city councils and leadership just make everything worse every year. They just keep repeating it. So instead of admitting that the family is critically important and we must return to the family and tribalism, you know, undoing all the liberalism, feminism, socialism, left wing policies of the last 70 years and just going back to the time before that they they work to make everyone equal which means they have to destroy everyone's family so everybody is as broken as they are it's kind of the sunk cost investment fallacy i mean you're seeing it in other areas today where people want to uh, want you to join them um so instead of dealing with real issues they focus on old movies and books that don't fit their new worldview because the old material is coming from a nationalist and tribal perspective and a nuclear family and tribalism or national pride is haram to these globalist worms which is why it's so important to always be pointing out these filthy degenerates for the miserable reprobates they are and really the optics here are pretty good because it's it's usually a group of fat blue-haired antifa girls and disgusting soy boys who you can smell through the screen and they're always angry which is pointless when they never come up with any solutions they want to defund the police and then you ask them like well, okay what happens after that how do you prosecute criminals and they give you a blank stare you want to let everyone out of jail and close the jails except for except for the right-wing people it's like okay so you just want to you just want to persecute your enemies um so they're all emotionally invested in the moment and not in the future. It's a child, you know, the participation trophy generation grown up. It's just left to the bell curve, people manipulating people who are even further to the left of the bell curve. So, hey, what happens when the criminals violently attack the mental health social workers that you send out to deal with them? You know, either they're all going to quit and you get the cannibal warlords of L.A. or the social workers arm themselves and shoot the criminals. In which case, how are they different from cops? Oh, well, we changed the name. Yeah, that's you just the, the nomenclature is just rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. They don't have an answer for that either. They don't have an answer for a lot of stuff. So they think that the British were bad and the Zulus were good, which is not true. The Zulus were every bit as bloodthirsty as the very bloodthirsty English. And the English were breeding, uh, bringing much needed cultural enrichment in the form of diversity to Central Africa. The Zulus didn't understand that diversity was their strength. The Zulus didn't know that they were, they were going to be stronger together with the English enriching their lives. And there actually is no such thing as colonization because there are no lines on the earth. Africa, of course, belongs to the world. Didn't we all originate out of the early hominids tens of millions of years ago from that region? If you believe in that theory, then Africa belongs to all humans. It's the home place. It's weird that the left brain, uh, believes that non-Euro diversity going to Euro areas is good, but the reverse is bad. And when it's the empire of dust, China going to Africa, they just get kind of confused by that. Or if it's the Chinese killing elephants and rhinos, the left wing ignores it because they can't find a way to blame Europeans. If diversity is their strength, then the Zulus were in the wrong for resisting the English enriching them. 
To really value diversity, the English should have wiped them all out because they were a threat to the English diversity. It's only after a genocide that you're free to respect our differences in peace and harmony. Anyway, you can check out uh, Zulu on um, Odyssey, BitChute, and pretty much every other of uh, that type of uh, video platform out there. Fun movie, and I think they made it a follow-up movie because, I mean, there's no shortage of battles going on in Central Africa. I mean, if you wanted to... You want to film uh, like a movie um, in Central Africa now about settling the Zulus. It's like there's also no shortage of battles of them fighting each other and fighting other tribes. Like you don't have to involve the Europeans at all if you want to keep just keep it just the core uh, core African story. Um, there's I mean there's a ton of these kind of stories to tell, and Hollywood is not going to tell those stories uh, probably because. Um, I mean, well, one, the political correctness issue is like Hollywood only exists now to make uh, Europeans as the antagonists. So if you have a story where one African tribe is is going after another, like if you told the woman kid the true story of the Dahomey tribe, I can't imagine what the reception would be. Probably not a whole lot of people would see it because there's just probably not a whole lot of interest in it. People want to, you know. They want to follow the narrative where, where I mean, they make the retelling. Of the thing is, if you told the true story, I'm sure it would make more money than this this bizarro fictional retelling where they were the good guys. Like, oh, we're we're forced to trade other human beings. We really wanted to trade rubber trees or something. It's like, that's not what happened <laughs> at all. Yeah, but if we say what actually happened, then the woke crowd will be confused. It's like you can't really go after them. But, I mean, they would they would probably try to anyway. Anyway. Anyway, go check out Zulu, and I'll see you guys all next episode.